why the fuck do the have to do this every year, Dad? Why can't you just smile and get it over with? This is for your grandmother for Christmas, for God's sake. You used to be such an adorable little child. How come you're such an annoying little shit these days? Too much ecstasy and coke must have done it, Dad. But hey, I'm from a mixed up family, am I not? I knew it! Well, I wasn't going to tell you until you were 18, but I got news for you, child. You're not even a part of the family. You're your uncle's child, and I've been cleaning up his mess for 12 years. Hmm? Happy Christmas. We are now live in the dungeon of Berlin's number one fetish club, the Sex Mensch Club. Are you okay over there, man? Oh, you're talking to me. This is so boring. I came all the way here from Williamsburg to Berlin and people said that Berlin was so hardcore when it came to BDSM. I won't say this is hardcore, this is just like a hard snore. It looks pretty intense. Why are you so disappointed? It, I told them, I was like, I want to be your bitch. But I think they said, or thought I said, I want to be their witch. We're doing this whole inquisition thing. Oh my god, this is so 16th century. And they don't even know how to like tie up my hands. I could totally get out of this. And I should get out of this because I told them to use some hand sanitizer and I could get some from my bag because ugh, those hands are dirty. Mademoiselle, what are you doing naked in the park? Oh, that's a very good question. Uh, I ask myself the same. I thought I come here for breakfast and uh, chilling. But so to see, uh, I'm the only one chilling. It does look chilly. Yes, uh, but I can handle it. Uh, you know, La Femme, uh, we are much resilient than men. Eh? Look at them. I can see it's chilly, but what about breakfast? Oh, to be honest, Ale, I thought I will be the breakfast. Eh? But uh, I don't know about the men or maybe the menage à trois for breakfast, uh, but the men... Uh, I don't know about them. Maybe they are afraid of the shrinkage yeah? instead of a big uh, baguette uh, on petit croissant. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have learned something today. Not only do French men run away in times of war, but they're also afraid to show their equipment when it's chilly outside. Back to the studio. All this fruit and not even one banana. Disappointment. Welcome viewers, we are in Shoreditch tonight, where the Divine Pig has opened its third Michelin star restaurant. Over here we have Mr. Pompous, who has had a dinner at, the, at this new exciting restaurant. Mr. Pompous, what has made you decide to uh, come here? Well, thank you for asking. Uh, I've been meaning to come to this restaurant for quite some time after I saw a review posted on the door of my local church, St. Ignatius, by Martin Luther, where he gave it 95 out of 100, the remaining five points uh, going towards complaining about the Catholic Church. Um, yes, I've been meaning to take my wife. Uh, she and I are pig farmers, and this is, after all, the divine pig. So consider it a natural calling, if you will. And what, what did you have tonight, Mr. Pompous? Well, as you can see in my hand, I have ordered the Serpenter, uh, which is a little unusual to say the least, but not to be unexpected from a Michelin star restaurant. The uh, surf element being the red lobster and the turf element being this single round spherical potato with a side garnish of some random flour. What, what about the ambiance? Ambiance? Well, we're in the middle of a forest. What can I say? I've never felt a cool breeze quite like it in my life. But, it, you know, it has its downsides. If you need to go to the toilet, you must just piss in the bush over there and use the leaves to wipe your ass. And lastly, how about, what's your overall rating? What was your overall experience? Well, I thought the food would come cooked, to be honest. But this robster is bloody well raw, which gives me a sore tummy and a touch of typhoid. You know, these 16th century stomachs can only handle so much. Um, 
This potato is, needless to say, approximately one month old and is now sprouting the side garnish of a flower. Not only that, it's so hard to get a bloody plate these days, you know, these hipster restaurants. This is actually a book of small poetry and they expect you to just tear out the poems and use them to wipe your mouth when you're finished. But the cocktails are quite nice to die for, actually. This yogly long fellow was the previous customer, and after he was finished, I'm now drunk a cocktail out of his skull. One last question, Mr. Pompous. Why didn't you start your game yet? Well, as you can see here, it would be a shame not to take a, 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 a picture of this delightful looking construction of a meal. So I'm posing here for the three hours for my portrait to be taken so I could share it with my friends on Slowgram. Somebody please tell me how to drink from that fucking glass because I have no idea without spilling all the wine outside. Who the fuck invented that glass? Asshole. I'm so tired of getting cast as the extra in all of these paintings. Yeah, it sucks. We have things to say. I mean, who's this Jesus guy anyway? All he does is magic tricks. We can fly. Yeah, and what's up with his girlfriend, this diva Mary? Uh, I think it might be his mom. Oh, oops. I think we should just go to the top. What do you think? I hear you, sister. Sister? Are you assuming my gender? I'm a cherub. I don't have a gender. <laughs> Jesus, sorry. Jesus. I'm also tired of him too. Let's go talk to God. Let's do it! <laughs> How am I supposed to breathe? into this dress. Look at this fucking collar. It's impossible to breathe. Who invented this fashion? Hmm? Asshole.